The Baseball Together Network presents the Philly Baseball Together Podcast with your hosts, Jason and Tori. And now, Philly Baseball Together. All right, welcome back, listeners. This is the April month in review edition of the Philly Baseball Together Podcast. Uh, My name is Jason, and with me, as always, is my good friend, Tori. Tori, how are you doing today? I am well. Thank you for asking. <laughs> uh, no, I, I'm doing. I'm doing good. Uh, probably would be doing a little bit better if the Phillies were doing a little bit better. But you know, that's Phillies are going to Philly. You know. <laughs> Let me ask you this question: Would you be doing a lot better had you beat me this week in fantasy baseball? <clears throat> Why you decided to mention that, didn't you? <laughs> you know, it's funny because I was, um, I I was two and zero, and I was like, all right, yeah, you know. But I'm I'm we we only do in our, in our fantasy baseball we only do the uh, the I'm in two leagues and one where we do the uh, the weekly where you set up your roster Monday and then that's it for the week and then another where you do it daily and I'm so used to the daily one where I switch things around like every day because I've been doing that one for like eight years that I I I just cannot get like uh I I can't get used to this the one where. You said it on Monday, and that is that, you know. Um, but yeah, you you beat me uh, pretty handily. <laughs> <laughs> That's because I had a good uh, a good appearance from Scherzer, and I got to be honest, uh, the Harper pickup worked out for me because he got me consistent five points almost every game. Since you know, I that's got him. it's interesting because you know it, it feels like Harper has been for the, for April. He Harper was not Harper. He was. I, I don't like a shadow of himself and and there might be like a lingering injury there i'm where I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure um but i thought it was too well i mean obviously if it's his throwing arm it would still probably affect his hitting but it seems like he's not 100 percent there right now i know there's an, an elbow issue um i think he's supposed to have another throwing session tomorrow okay um and they're gonna go from there um, but until he's a hundred percent, he's going to be long-term DH. So let's just jump right into this then. Okay. Um, him as a prolonged DH is going to have lasting effects on the team because that's, that's mm. taking up that DH slot from Reese, from Castellanos, from JT, yep. from Schwarber. Um, it, you know, when you say it like that, it's, I mean, it's like five ninths of our team are, are GHs. Um, <laughs> and, um, but you, you're right. I mean, you know, you, you would, ex- you expected at the beginning of the year that to have like kind of a revolving door of DHs with, uh, with Schwarber and Castellanos and Hoskins. And, um, and the first couple of the weeks, they, they pretty much did that. Um, where, you know, was, uh, Schwarber was in the left on the opening day and Castellanos was DH. And then they kind of like traded on and off. Um, and I think a lot of people expected Schwarber to be the DH. Now, and I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Like the, I, for the first couple games of the season, I, I think the defense looked to be as bad as everybody was, was expecting it to be, you know. Since then, I, I actually, I don't think it's been as bad other than Bohm, you know, with his Bohm headed plays, um, a couple of weeks ago. You, you see what I did there? Uh, his, I see what you did. Yeah. You know, instead of bone headed, I said Bohm headed. All right. I did just making sure you were following me there. <laughs> I was following you. I was following you. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and Bohm is, of course, something that we're going to get into, uh, into later in this, uh, in this session also. But overall, you know, well, let's I, I, let's just talk broadly for for April. Um, just to begin, I think I, I think that there was a lot of positives to take away, and there was also a lot of uh, a, a lot of negatives. The positives, at least for me, was that I think the pitching actually wasn't bad, other than Wheeler being weirdly not and even the, his last start i think he looked like he was starting to turn things around a little bit um but I, I thought think... he looked really good against milwaukee yes he did i thought he did um and but how much with wheeler is because he he didn't even have a full spring the guys didn't have a full spring That's training true. to begin with but he didn't even have a full version of the spring training that they had hmm. because he had that that hand injury um you know, that's an excellent point, actually. And who, you know, and you never know, like, just how often they, uh, 
you know, they, they feel like they, they need to have like that tune up period. I guess they, they kind of expect it. And he, he barely had any of that, as you said. So maybe now he's just starting to get into the rhythm. Um, which and is the hope because we desperately need him as our ace. We do, but I'm really happy to see how Nola has looked the last few starts. Yes. I mean, let's be honest. If uh, he, he pitches great against the Mets, yeah, it, you know, other than the fact that, uh, like, oh, oops, we got no hit, you know, he probably put him hit, pitched really well. Um, and of course, that was not his fault. Uh, by the way, that's the last time I'm going to mention that game in this podcast. <laughs> um, but so here, here's something I always go back to with, with Mets fans. Yeah. Um, I respect the heck out of Mets fans because. I feel like they're our sibling fan fan base because really? because I think there's a lot of respect between Phillies fans and Mets fans. We all hmm. act like we all act like the way we should for the rivalry, but I've never dealt with any disrespectful Mets fans, hmm. and I feel like because their franchise has always kind of been kind of eh, and we've always had a lot of eh, <laughs> we kind of understand the struggle to be well to be a fan of a franchise that. It's tough to love yeah. sometimes. And I, you know, I admit out the gate this year, I hate to say it, they look good. You know, um, they look very strong. They, uh, Scherzer has given them that, uh, that swagger, I think that they, that they kind of needed. And now, and of Did course, he though after last night. <laughs> yeah. You know, I was just going to say, I mean, the Phillies hit, hit, hit Scherzer well. Um, both times I mean, they've played them. Yeah, and under the and Schwarber had two home runs against him last night. One from his knees, by the way. Uh, I don't know when this podcast is going to go out, but it is May second right now. Um, so the game that we're talking about is the one that uh, the Phillies lost ten to six to the Mets on national um, TV yet again. Yeah, I know, right? Um, <laughs> but uh, wow, I completely lost my train of thought. What we were talking about prior to that, though. Um, I, I was again, just I giving I was just giving credit where it was due to the to the Mets as a fan base. Oh, I, that's right. That's I respect right. their fan base. The so franchise, I, however, is going to do something stupid and it's going to cost them the season. So. You know what? I, I, eventually, I mean, eventually, <laughs> you feel like that that has to happen, but I don't know. They look pretty good this year. I'm I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Uh, but here's the thing: every time they look really good, they end up crashing and burning at some point because it's it's unfortunately in their DNA as a as a team. Well, did you see now that I, I just saw this maybe about a half hour ago. They, um, they designated, um, Cano for assignment. So that means that they essentially just ate $41 million, you know. No, they have um, a billionaire owner. They can, I know. That. <laughs> now keep in mind, we, we also have a billionaire owner, but not, you know, to like, not like Steve Cohen. I think that's his name, right? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah. That's what I thought. Um, I mean, yeah, Cohen could be like, you know, like, he's not like Elon Musk, where he's like, where, you know, he's like, I think I'm going to buy Twitter today, um, <laughs> you know, but I mean, he he has money, obviously, and oh. uh, it looks like he's willing to spend it for his team. But anyways, let's uh, well, let, let me let's ask you this, because since we're talking April and I know you you've been to the ballpark already, how was how was it in person this this season compared to last season? Because things are different. I mean, things were very different last season in the ballpark than it is this season. So how was it going back? So yeah, I, I was there for opening day and um I um it was uh, it was Friday and um my I was there with my uh, with my father and uh, my very catholic uh, aunt also and it was Friday and it was still before Easter so you know they were like you know we we can't eat meat at all so cheesesteaks were out you know, which I was devastated because I really wanted a cheesesteak. So instead, they made me wait in line 45 minutes at this new pizza place that just opened up in the park. And, you know, and, uh, you know, I, I'm getting way off track here, but I just thought it was a funny anecdote that I had to wait that long. Well, but they know, have veggie. Pizza. They have they have uh, the vegetarian cheesesteaks there, from what I hear. Do they really? Uh, Quest <laughs> Love has a has a, owns a stand at the ballpark that does. Uh, I think they're beyond cheesesteaks. Hmm. I mean, then, well, of course, now I'm going to have to remember that next year. Um, <laughs> you know, but, uh, um, yeah, and, like the news was walking down, like the, uh, you know, the line being like, why are you waiting in line for 45 minutes for this pizza? Is it as good? And, and they're like, I don't know. I'm, I'm still in line waiting for it, you know? Um, <laughs> other than that, though, the, the game itself, 
uh, was pretty much exactly as we expected it to be uh, before the season, I mean. So we were playing the A's, and um, Nola was on the bump. Nola looked great through about five innings or so. Schwarber let off the game with a, a home run that hit off the second deck. Everything, was, I mean, every everybody was, and everybody was pumping, you know. I think, I don't know if I sent it to you or not, but that um, uh, the, the Fanatic, like parachuted into the stadium and it was and it was did, the real yes. the real fanatic also and it was so cool like because everybody was just kind of like because these two other people they parachuted in to begin and then like and they kind of had have mentioned like well you know there's somebody that's been missing from the festivities today and uh, these two people parachuted in and i was like that's weird why would why would they care about you know like parachuters coming into the stadium and then you kind of saw, like, in the uh, out of the corner of your eye, there was a third person that was coming down in a uh, parachute from the sky. And I think, like, collectively, like, the whole stadium, like, kind of realized at that moment that, holy moly, you know, the fanatic is, <laughs> is jumping into the stadium this way. And, and he flew, like, right over my head also. It was great. I got a great video of it and everything. And the crowd absolutely went wild when, when he showed up. Um and of course, so but just being back there, and uh, we were in a we were in left field, which is um, it, it's a great spot to view the game. Not such a great spot for viewing balls and strikes, like because you know, like I had to keep my after the pitch was thrown, I would immediately have to like turn to the umpire and be like, look to see like if he made any kind of movement, whether it was a strike or a ball. Yeah. But uh, but overall, uh, it was it was a great trip to the uh, to the ballpark. It was like in the mid '60s that day, so it was it was perfect. It was great to be back. The Phillies scored nine runs that 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 game, so it, it was just a sense that maybe maybe we'll be back. And I mean, it's still only early May, you know. It is. So uh, and I, I I did see somebody uh, posted just the other day that the uh, the 80 Phillies and the 08 Phillies also start out 11 and 11. Now, right now we're 11 and 12, but, you know, I'm going to skip that for right now. Um, But you know what? I think they did just as good against the Mets this weekend as anyone else has done against the Mets, and they put up a lot of runs against this team. So right. I, I think, and it's something I have in the notes, I think this team has a lot more potential than even we believed a month ago. And I mean, and let's be honest. I mean, the the offense has almost been not really clicking. Um, if you look at like everybody's numbers, I mean, Schwarber has been hitting some Schwar bombs. Um, uh, but let's his, talk uh, about his batting average. That's awful. right, right. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. It, it is right at the Mendoza line. But um, I I saw something recently that his uh, his OPS doesn't really heat up until. You know, the summer starts to start to heat up, so it's around June that he really starts to start to heat up traditionally. So, if that's the case, I mean, he already has seven home runs. He's pretty much doing what we were expecting him to do. If he can get his batting average up to like two fifty while still hitting those kind of bombs, great, I'll take it. You know, um, now if he continues to be, uh, you know, Chris Davis two point oh, uh, you know, well, I think it's more a re. Are we seeing the the 2020 Schwarber? Are we seeing the 2021 Schwarber? I think that's really what's going to come down to. It, yes, and and I think we talked about this last uh, last thing, the last podcast we did, where um, I, I'm always wary of how people do right before a contract uh, a contract year, you know, or or in a contract year. Um, and it is of, it is a, a a myth and a belief for a reason. So. Yes, yeah, you know. Um, so I, you know, it, it, it's it, it, I I'm expecting more 2021 Schwarber. I think his power is there. I think his timing is there. He's looked good at the plate. He has not really looked lost. Um, now the other person that I've been really happy with, I've been really happy with uh, Cam Camargo. I always want to say Carmargo, but Camargo, you know, um, he's filled in really well for DD. And um, and now that they sent Stott down um, and now that Torres is no longer on the team, which I'm 
I'm not enamored with, but you know, um, he's really, but he's played well also. Um, what are you, what, so what are your, what are your surprises though to start the season? Somebody that really has surprised you. I gotta, I gotta go with Bohm. I mean, he, he earned his spot back. Mm -hmm. He did. He was not the opening day third baseman and he, he earned right. it back. And he, yeah. at one point, he was the best hitter on the team there for a few weeks. And I think he kind of still is now. And of course, everybody knows that we, uh, the, you know, he had that three error game and the cameras caught him saying, um, I won't say it, you know, but, uh, but you know um, what? He owned it. He, yes. He owned that. He said it. And that goes a long way with the fan base. Yeah. Like, because remember, then the next day he came up and he did his, um, he did an at bat and the fans gave him a shanty ovation. And the, uh, then the media and people on social media tried to say, like, oh, well, it was, uh, you know, it, it wasn't a real shanty ovation. They were making fun of him. But no, it that was, was a, a, no, that was a real, real standing standing ovation. ovation. <laughs> yeah. And I, I, I loved it. Like, and, and to me, like, when you look at that, and you look at um somebody like Ben Simmons, you know, who kind of moped all all year, and he didn't play at all, even after he went to the Nets. Sorry, uh, welcome to by the way, seventy sixers basketball podcast. Uh, you know, I'm your host. No, I'm kidding. It's um, funny because that wasn't who I was gonna go with for that comparison, but yeah, uh, let's run with it because I was gonna go yeah. in house from the 2019 team. Really? Okay, wait. Well, now I'm trying to think about who you might be thinking of. Wait, don't tell me. Um, uh, no, all right, go ahead. Yeah, who who are you thinking? Okay, who are you thinking about? Sean Rodriguez comparison? as the comparison because he <gasps> That's trashed right. the fan base and he got booed out of the stadium. The That's next game. right. I forgot all about that. Wow. Yeah. But that that's a deep cut. <laughs> that's bad. That's a deep cut from the 2019 team. Deep cut should be like 20 years ago. <laughs> I know. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, he, he trashed the team and everything. And then like, yeah, he was, wasn't he gone like recently after that? I think he, I don't think he lasted long after that. Uh, um, let's pull up his information. He was with them from 18, no, for 19. And then he was in Miami in, in 2020. All right. For some but, reason, I thought that like he was, he was gone like right after that or something, but I guess not. Um, but, but yeah, think, like, go ahead. I think the difference between Rodriguez. And and Boehm is just some people aren't meant to play in this city. Yes. It, and it's... I think Boehm has the mentality and the work ethic that he can say what he said, he can own it, and the fan base is going to forgive him because we know that's not who he is at heart as a character. And I hope he's learned that also, you know, just from, from saying that. And, you know, because we, we can. We, we can be so hard on, on players, um, not unlike... And like any other big city that has that has a team, you know, New York will be tough on their players. Boston will be tough on their players. Same thing with us. I think it's um, just the East Coast. Yeah, <laughs> I think you it's know. East Coast fans. Now, um, hey, no, we're not. I, I don't think we're going to do anything like the Yankees fans did the other uh, the other week or the other weekend. Um, but uh, <laughs> yeah, um, where the what were they? They were like throwing stuff on the on the field after the game. I think that was it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But we won't. Again, we won't get too much into this into that because you know, um, because this is the Phillies pod, uh, baseball podcast. Um, but yeah, Bohm. Um, he. I. I really. I really enjoyed watching him this year, and if he can be consistent with his uh, output. Um, I think he can really become a fan favorite because of, you know, what happened. And it's, it's weird to say that. It's weird that, um, you know, we can say like, oh, well, him saying, I bleep and hate this place, um, will, would turn around and into being one of the best parts of his career or something like that. Who knows? Maybe five years down the line, he'll, he'll laugh at that and be like, you know, he'll, he'll be, he'll be holding the, uh, the World Series uh, MVP trophy, and in, instead he'll say, "I believe and love this place," you know, like <laughs> at the like, uh, yeah. I think the fan base already does want to love him, and I think they do. And even someone like me, who's predicting his doom on the team, I still wanted to see him succeed because I think yeah. he has the potential to be a great player. Yeah. Um, and I think playing on this team, he's only going to get better because he's got Harper with him. He we got. Bohm and Casti or uh, we got Schwarber and Castellanos for four years each. He's gonna come up with some really great 
hitters and decent defensive players that as a player, he should only mature by being with them. Yeah, I mean, he, he has a lot of people around him that he can, of course, learn from. Um, Castellanos has, uh, speaking of Castellanos, he, he has played really well also. I've been very happy with, uh, with, with him. Um, just quickly, to, you know, touching on some other players, it was nice to see Hoskins kind of uh, burst out and have a home run. Not last night, but the night before, because I think he had been in a bit of a, a bit of a slump too. Um, but yeah, so Castellanos right now, he's batting 286, three home runs. Um, his, uh, OPS right now is 810, which is pretty solid. OPS plus is 138. Now, and again, I, I think I mentioned this on the podcast before, but the, the average OPS plus should be about 100. So that means he's 38% better than the average player on the team. Um, not on the team, I'm sorry, in, uh, in baseball. But um, so I, I have like Castellanos just quickly touch it on our other big um, off season uh, acquisition. The other thing I've been really happy with this year is I actually I think the bullpen looks pretty good. What do you think? I think the bullpen does look pretty good. And, and sticking with pitching, uh, Kyle Gibson is doing exactly what I said he needs to do for this team on the last episode. He needs to just be a steady hand. And yeah. I think he's been a steady hand and getting that from him every fourth day. That's awesome. I know. And, uh, let me see. How old is he right now? So he's 34. Right, he's 34. Yeah. I just was looking he's at young, that. They're all younger than us. Let's just leave it at that. Ah, ow, my soul. <laughs> uh, when did, okay. You know, it's funny because, all right. I looked, I was just looking at his baseball reference page and I was like, 34, ah, he's old. And then I'm like, well, then you said that and I'm like, wait a second. You know, when yeah, did because, we get old? Is that what you're right. asking? <laughs> well, you know, kind of. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm still trying to be like, um, I, I, well, I'm 37 now. So I can't say that I'm in my mid thirties anymore. I have to say that I'm in my. <sighs> Late thirties, but so you're uh, a month older than me, so we're the same age. <laughs> I know. Um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's depressing, but man, but yeah, but back to Gibson though. I mean, he, his ERA right now is solid, two point nine three. Um, you know, and so he's picked twenty seven innings. He has um twenty six strikeouts, so that's almost a strikeout per inning. Um. Let's see, uh, one wild pitch. So, I mean, so he's, I mean, he, you're right. He, he's been excellent and everything that the Phillies could have hoped for this year. Um, Ranger Suarez has looked good. You don't, I mean, you, of course, you don't expect him to be, um, you know, have an ERA of one every year or something. <laughs> but I mean, so his ERA right now is four, uh, 4.42, which let's say that he was a fifth starter. That's not bad for a fifth starter. Um, no, no, it isn't. So if we can get, if Wheeler really has turned the corner, um, this pitching staff looks pretty solid. And so I mean, if we could just get some consistent offense, um, which is, it's weird to say because the offense is, should be so good. Um, but you just never know, like, you know, when a, what's going to click. I, I, know, I know the metrics people are going to hate me for saying this, but this is a streaky team on, yes. at the plate. They're going to have, I think they're going to have hot streaks together as a team, and they're going to have cold streaks together as a team. Mm. Um, But we're going to have to wait and see what happens. Because, I mean, like like you said, it's only the second month, and it so just let, started. <laughs> let, me ask, let me ask you this. Then. Let's say that it's at the end of May, and the team is still 500. Is Girardi on the hot seat? I, th I I'm going to tell you this right now. I think he's on the hot hot seat no matter what. I think if they don't get to the playoffs, no matter how well they do finish wise, he's gone. Yeah, yeah I, I think I would say that too. And um, I, I like Girardi. I do. I, I just think yeah. he's too positive sometimes. Yeah, and uh, I mean, and I really I expected more from him. I guess as a as a coach. Um, but I, you know, and I don't know, maybe, maybe they need somebody that's more like a Larry Boa member uh, who's going to like yell and scream and like throw chairs or something like that. Dare I say um, it? We need Charlie. That's what we need. Charlie. You know, we need someone who season can, is back. We need someone who can read them the riot act when they need it. Yeah. Um, and, and, and a weird comparison. 
Girardi kind of reminds me of the gentleman who was the manager of the team, Danny Ozark, before they had hmm. Dallas Green in 1980. Because all the players said is that Ozark was a player's manager. Yeah. He and was then, laid like, back. He was easy going with them. Yeah. And Dallas was the one to light a fire under them because he was hard on them. He yeah. made them hustle. He yelled at them. There's an infamous meeting where they the reporters could hear yep. him talking clear as day behind closed doors. He was so I loud. read Maya. My favorite one of my my favorite books is um it's called Almost a Dynasty, and it deals with um the seventy five to well it's like the rise and fall of the um of the Phillies of the seventies and eighties. Yeah, seventy five to eighty three, I think. Yeah, right? and it I mean, it was and it, it's such a great book. Because it, um, you know, it talks about all of that, and it even does, it even mentions that meeting. It says, you know, Jason Stark was um, uh, was doing like he 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 was he was trying to like write as fast as Green could yell, <laughs> you know. I think is what it says. Um, I think he was trying to use like I think in the book it says that he was re he was trying to do like shorthand, and you know, so like everything was there. So like I guess the whole thing. Now, now I need to go find that in the book. I wish I, <laughs> I wish I, I wish I had it open right now where I could just. Although I'm sure we would. Jason have to talks there. about it on the really great Phillies produced documentary about the team. So, oh, what's that called? I don't think I knew it. Uh, is it the team that wouldn't die? It's on YouTube actually. I have it on DVD because I'm a nerd, but it is on YouTube for free. So, Ooh, all right, I'm, I think I'm gonna have to give that a watch later on. <laughs> later on today, I'll send you um, the link. Don't worry, I'll, I, I have it saved. Nice. Okay. <laughs> um. So I mean, yes, it, it maybe it's very maybe it's possible that we need that kind of manager who's just gonna like you know come and shake him, shake him up and everything, and be like you know what, like you gotta do what you gotta do, um, something like that. Maybe they need some like maybe they need like a uh, an epic Rocky montage, um, to like <laughs> tie of the tiger, um. See, you know, I like, can now that you said this, it's gonna happen. Yeah. We're no. going to see like a clip of Harper running up the stairs. We're going to see uh, <laughs> Schwarber in Russia. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you, you know, it's probably like, a, um, or maybe it would be like a, a for, for like the nerdier fans out there, it's going to be like an Empire Strikes Back, uh, you know, where he's training with Yoda and like, um, JT Real Budu's like running through the running through the woods or running through the jungle and he has Scott Kingery on his back, you know, or something like that. He's doing flips and everything. Um you're not laughing. Have you not seen Empire Strikes Back? I have seen Empire Strikes Back, but unfortunately I've seen Seagull stop it now probably more times than I've seen Empire Strikes Back, but that's that's oh, a lot of that. times. <laughs> yeah. I, so I love go ahead. I I love that. I love that parody. But go ahead, yes. But you're telling me that and all I'm picturing is run, run. I could be run, your backpack run, while you yeah. run. <laughs> I could be your backpack while. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love to groove and boogie. Yeah. Show you some dance moves. Ooh. I, you like know, my I, daughter I, I, I can sing better. I can sing so. better than this, but I'm, I choose not to right now. Which yeah. actually, since that's, that's a good segue since we do got to wrap this up. Um, why don't you, um, quick plug your singing channel? That you have oh well okay yeah you know that, that you know that, that thank you for that that's a good idea um yeah so i do have a uh, a singing channel on youtube i am called the uh, the bearded bald baritone because i have a beard i'm bald and i sing baritone if you, can, <laughs> if you guys couldn't figure that out um you know so um but yeah and i do i do mostly covers uh, you know, I, I just did the other day, I did, um, My Way by Frank Sinatra. I've done Billy Joel. I've done the, the Beatles. Um, because I'm like per perpetually stuck in the sixties through eighties, I guess, you know. Um, but, uh, yeah, thank you for that because I would, I would love it if, if you guys could come and, um, and visit my channel. Again, it's just look up the bearded bald baritone on, uh, on YouTube. Well, I remembered you had it, and that's why I, I even said to myself this morning, "We got to make sure you plug it." So I'm glad. Nice. I'm glad you you sang there, so I could have that segue. Um, yeah, uh, I, I really, I really do sing better on my channel than I did right there. So you, know, you do. Like, I'm not going to argue with you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you. Um, you can find me uh, every other week on the Not Another Sports Podcast with me and my best friend David. Um, we cover general sports talk geared towards all fans. This week we talked about Angel Hernandez, Ben Simmons, 
and overtime Stanley Cup games. Uh, so it was a lot of fun. Nice. Um, and then uh, the Punk Popcast is currently in between seasons, but our, our season finale for the second season dropped last Wednesday. And Brad from Baseball Together and myself, we talked about uh, Green Day's seminal album, Dookie. We covered the big hits and some deep cuts. Uh, and you can find us wherever you get your podcasts. And we're on YouTube. Um, you're up next with the next one. Man, how am I going to follow that? You were talking about Dookie and everything and all these <laughs> great, like, uh, you know, like pop punk albums from the from the 90s. Um, but, you, you know, you can support the Philly Baseball Together podcast and the Baseball Together podcast network by picking up a shirt at Philly. Uh, yeah, Philly at baseball together dot com slash Philly baseball together podcast. Uh, when you get there, listeners of the Philly baseball together pod can take 15 percent off the uh, Philly collection by using code FIPOD at checkout all right all right well with that thank you guys for just listening to us another month here uh we'll be back uh with the may wrap up here in early june uh uh you can find us wherever you get your podcasts uh please remember to subscribe rate and review show us some love and our show is now on youtube so once this drops audio wise it will drop on youtube if you want to check us out there Ooh. uh with that this episode's out of here out of here